Southern Vermont, the corridor that runs along Route 9 from Bennington to Brattleboro, has hosted great battles on our war for independence, enjoyed economic boom times during the Industrial Revolution, and now it's seeking its place in the 21st century. Tonight, Connecting Point takes you on the road as Jamie Franklin of the Bennington Museums gives our producer, Tony Dunn, and videographer Mark Langevin a crash course on some of the history of the region. So Vermont, and particularly southern Vermont, being um, most closely connected and tied both geographically, commercially, socially, to the rest of the New England states, um, was the last of the New England states to be settled. Prior to the French and Indian War, um, in the late 1750s, early 1760s, um, this territory was really deemed unsafe. And so it wasn't until 1761 that the first permanent settlement um, occurred here in southern Vermont, and it was right here on Bennington. So the Battle of Bennington was fought on August 16th, 1777, and it really was a turning point in the Revolutionary War. Of course, there's the monument up on the hill, which is, um, I believe, still the largest man-made structure in the state of Vermont, so it really is an icon. It's something that literally grounds Bennington in its sense of identity and self. But around the same time that Bennington became settled, people started coming up the Connecticut River Valley, which was really one of the main thoroughfares um, in New England. And so people could come up from Connecticut and Massachusetts in droves, and it really served as kind of an 18th century highway. In the 19th century, surprisingly to some people, technological uh, manufacturing, kind of precision manufacturing, played an incredibly important role over on the east side of the mountains. And some of the really big names in American firearm manufacturing actually got their origins um, in Vermont in the Connecticut River Valley. Because of the early 19th century boom, there was a lot of people and money. And so a lot of the kind of innovation that was happening in the country as a whole was happening right here in Vermont. And it became within in, you know a few decades one of the most prosperous areas in New England people were flowing in money was flowing in goods were flowing in um, and it really took off dramatically from that point on so there was really kind of an industrial manufacturing explosion in the mid 19th century and then people started leaving um, you know early 19th century boom late 19th century bust. So even though there was huge manufacturing still here in the late 19th century, the people, the goods, and the money were starting to leave. Um, and so um, by the early 20th century, um, things were starting to, to change dramatically. Um, of course, you know, running through the 20th century, you then get Bennington College. We become a real epicenter for progressive education. Mid 20th century, you get the highway bringing in people in droves again. You get tourism. There's ebbs and flows, as with anything in history, but Vermont, I like to think of it as a synopsis or a kind of microcosm of American history as a whole. Even now in the 21st century, you can walk down the street in a town like Bennington, or you can drive through backcountry roads in places like Shaftesbury, and you can see the 18th century in terms of the buildings, the houses, the places, and you can physically see and touch it. And so I think we have that kind of kind of visceral direct connection to our past. And, and again, it allows us to connect and see what it has to offer so that we can move forward more informed. 